evening, pre-algebra. Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for, let me see, what is this, January 24th. Oh, I wrote that 25th, silly Mr. Lawrence. All right, January 24th, your lesson tonight. Now, your lesson tonight will not be on parallel lines. We are going to learn about what happens when your parrot runs away from home. Sorry, Gary, didn't mean to confuse you. We are going to be learning about polygons. Get it? Your parrot runs away from home. Polly's gone. Polygons. Now, before we get into naming polygons and all that, you need to check, know the definition of a polygon. A polygon has three characteristics. The first characteristic of a polygon is that it must be a closed figure. It must be closed. It must be closed. It cannot be like this. This is not a polygon. <laughs> That is not a polygon. This one is a polygon. Why? Because it's closed. Two. It must be two-dimensional. Two-dimensional. Okay. Oh, what am I spelling there? Two-dimensional. Two-dimensional. Sorry about that. Two-dimensional must be a 2D shape. Now, some of you get confused on dimensions. You, you hear it and you think this big fancy science fi kind of stuff. Well, all a dimension is is like length, width, or height. So for example, a square is two-dimensional because it has length, and you might say it has width, or you might say it has height. A triangle is two-dimensional. A circle is two-dimensional, though it's not a polygon, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But a cube is not two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional. So a cube is not a polygon. So no cubes. It's got to be a flat, closed shape. Okay, two-dimensional means it's flat. Okay, your body is not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. You have length, you have width, and you have height. Or you might say depth or thickness or something like that. Three dimensions, okay? So a closed two-dimensional shape and the third category is it has three or more sides. Three or more sides. All right, three or more sides. So a closed 2D shape having three or more sides. That is the definition of a polygon. Did I tell you, Homer, that a definition of a polygon was a closed three-dimensional, two-dimensional shape having three or more sides? Okay, now I know you know lots of polygons, but we're going to make a little chart here. And we're going to name them, the name of the polygon, We're going to put the number of sides that it has. And then we're going to put the total degrees. You should be copying this chart down in your notes, please. All right, the total number of degrees. And I'll show you a really cool way to figure that out. And then we're going to go with the measure, the measure of one angle when regular. Now, I've used that word regular before. I'm not sure if it's stuck with you. A regular polygon is like a square. Why? Because all the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. Any polygon can be regular. Not all polygons are regular. Okay, you might have a regular quadrilateral. That's a square. But if you have a rectangle, that's not regular. All four angles are the same, but not all four sides are the same. Okay, so let's go back to our definition of polygon here in a minute. And three or more sides. So the smallest number of sides a polygon can have is three sides. Now think really, oops, that's not where our name goes. Three sides goes right here, right? Now stop and think, stop and think. I might have to go to somebody really smart on this one. What do you call a polygon with three sides? Think really hard. Oh, man. Oh, 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 it's a triangle. Very good. A triangle. Now, some of you know the total degrees of a triangle. You can fill it in your chart, but I'm going to skip that for just a minute. All right. And let's say we have a polygon now with four sides. Four sides. What do you call a polygon with four sides? Not a square, not a rectangle. You need a name that encompasses both of them. That name, hopefully you're shouting at the screen, is quadra. Lateral, a quadrilateral, quad meaning four. All right, if you have five sides, it's kind of like that building we're going to see in Washington, D.C. 
or the emblem for the Chrysler Company, if you ask Drew's brother. Uh, that is a pentagon. Penta means five. Pentagon. All right. We'll come back and do these angles here in a minute. All right, let me see here. Uh, six sides. Six sides. Hopefully you know that that is called a hexagon. All right. And then seven sides, a lot of kids get wrong. It's an unusual one. You don't see them very often. A seven-sided polygon is called a heptagon. Heptagon. Okay. And I'm going to try to speed things up here a little bit so I don't run over my time limit. Eight. Nine. And... 10. All right. 8. Think octopus. It's an octagon. Octagon. All right. 9. A lot of people don't know is a nanagon. Not a nanagon. It's not your grandma. It's a nanagon. All right. And then 10. Think of 10 like the 70s or the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s. Those are all decades. This is a decagon. A decagon. All right, now I'm going to show you a really cool way to figure out the number of degrees in each one. So I'm going to start with the quadrilateral because you probably already know that. Hold on one second. You see right here I have a perfectly drawn quadrilateral. Now you wonder why I'm not an art teacher, I'll bet. I am going to notice that each angle is 90 degrees. It's a rectangle, right? 90, 90, 90, and 90. So 90 times 4 is 360. Quadrilaterals have 360 degrees. So you know what? I can go ahead and fill that in. Where's my little chart? Quadrilaterals have 360 degrees. Okay. Now, to get the number of degrees in... Oh, where did I go? To get the number of degrees in a triangle... I'm going to take this quadrilateral and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to draw diagonal from one corner, doesn't matter which corner I pick, to every other corner that doesn't already have a segment drawn from it. So that would only be this one down here. Now, I'm going to shade in this half of the triangle. How many degrees does the yellow half have to have? Well, the yellow half must have half of 360. So that would be 180 degrees. Now, most of you already know that. But I'm showing how to do that for a very specific reason. So that's 180 degrees. Okay. So now I'm going to go to a pentagon. Now watch how I do this. I'm going to draw a very, very nice regular pentagon. There it is. There we go. What a beautiful pentagon that is. I'm going to circle one of the angles. I'm going to draw a diagonal from every, from that angle to every corner that doesn't already have one. I won't draw one. I'll call this, let me see here. Let me call this angle one, two, three, and four. Okay, we'll call that five. I'm not going to draw a diagonal to angle one. It already has a segment, but I will draw one from 5 to 2. I will draw one from 5 to 3. I will not draw one from 5 to 4 because there's already a side there. Now check this out. How many degrees in this first triangle? 180. How many degrees in the middle triangle? 180. How many degrees in the last triangle? 180. 180 times 3, 0, 4, 5. There must be 540 total degrees, 540 total degrees in a pentagon, 540 total degrees. I'm going to do one more for you. I'm going to do the hexagon, and then your job is going to be to fill it out, okay? All right, so let me draw my hexagon here. Watch this. I can draw it really, really well. Look at that. What a beautiful hexagon. I circle and I'm going to go ahead and number them. You don't have to number them, 
I do that so that on the video you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so I circled one of the angles. Now I'm going to draw a diagonal from angle number one to every other angle that doesn't already have a segment drawn from number one. So I won't draw a diagonal to two. It's already there. I will draw to three. I will draw to four. I will draw to five. I will not draw to six. And it looks to me like I have four triangles. 180, 180, 180, 180, and 180 times 4 is going to be 720 degrees. So that means hexagons must have 720 degrees in them. Okay, now I have to show you something that would be wrong to do. It would be wrong to do this. Okay, let me get a polygon up here. It would be wrong if you were on, say, uh, a hexagon to do this. It would be wrong to break it up that way when you're trying to figure out how many angles or how many degrees in the angles. Because you see these angles here? You just created six angles that did not belong in the shape to begin with. So not only if you take all these triangles and multiply by 180, you're going to get the measure of all these angles, but you're going to get the measure of these angles too, which really aren't a part of the shape. You've just created them. And see what I'm tracing here? I'm tracing a circle. Your answer is going to be 360 degrees too big. Now it won't always be 360 degrees too big. It depends on how many new angles you create. But we don't ever want to do it this way. Never do it that way. You circle one angle, and then you draw a diagonal from that angle to every other angle that does not have a segment already drawn. And make sure you don't ever cross your diagonals. Notice none of mine cross. OK, you'll be able to fill out the rest of the table for 7, 8, 9, and 10. But one thing we need to worry about is how do I figure out the measure of just one angle when regular? Well, let's think about this here. Let's think about this. There's 180 degrees in a triangle. And if it's regular, all three angles are the same. So all I have to do is take 180, divide by 3, and I'll get 60 degrees. So if I have a regular triangle where all the sides and all the angles are the same, I'll divide I'll get each angle to be 60 degrees. If I have a quadrilateral, there's 360 total degrees in a quadrilateral. There are four angles. If they're all the same, I can just divide 360 by 4, and I'll get 90 degrees. Okay, so I took the total number of degrees and divided by it in the number of angles if it's regular. A pentagon, 540 divided by 5. That'll equal 108 degrees. Okay, the hexagon will be 720 divided by 6. That'll be 120 degrees. Okay? So that's the lesson for now. I'll have another video for you to watch in class tomorrow. I apologize for not being there. Those of you supposed to come up at lunch, I'm not there, so you'll need to come up on Thursday and Friday. All right? But Mr. Lawrence signing off now.